before doing any work on your computer, it uh, is suggested that you unplug the power. Um, but before you do that, be sure to touch with the power cord plugged in, be sure to touch the case. Um, and this will dissipate any static you may have on your fingers. In fact, if it's a extremely um, dry and there's static everywhere, personally, I might just leave this plugged in just so that the case is grounded. And whenever I come in and start to do any work, I can touch the metal body of the computer to dissipate any static before touching anything inside and destroying the computer. This Dell Optiplex actually has a release button. You push this and you see the side come and latch. It just comes off. Now the right side comes off of this computer. I'd say about 95% of the computers you're going to take the left side off. Here's another computer as an example. A lot of times they'll have a screw in here or maybe a, a thumb screw holding this side panel on. This one happens to have a button. After you press it, this panel slides off. And uh, I think the original hard drive was mounted in here. So when we're talking about desktop hard drives, there's two different kinds. This is the older technology. It's called an IDE hard drive. And the biggest difference is that the connector takes this ribbon cable. It's an Ultra ATA ribbon cable. and it's very common for computers to both have connectors for IDE hard drives and SATA hard drives. SATA hard drives are newer technology. If you go out and just want the newest, latest, and greatest, it will definitely be SATA. IDEs are going away. So if you have a really old computer, you may have to buy an IDE type hard drive for a replacement because it may not have this SATA type connection which is a much nicer little ribbon cable the other thing that's different about these is the power connection you see this takes a big four pin plug for power and this one takes a kind of a wide connector for power I've located the existing hard drive this computer has both the power connectors for a SATA hard drive and also the power connectors for an IDE hard drive. It also has lots of extra little ports in here for extra SATA drives. There's two here and if we look there's two more there. So you could put four SATA drives in this computer. This computer has one IDE port. See, it already has this ribbon cable, and it is uh, being used right now by the CD-ROM drive up here. Um, both CD-ROM drives and hard drives can use the same uh, technology when it comes to ports, either IDE or SATA. So if you want to replace your hard drive, um, keep in mind that if you actually take this out and put another hard drive in, all your data, your operating system, everything will be gone. And in my case, that's what I want to do. I just want a bigger drive. So I'm going to put this bigger drive in here. A lot of computers have, first off, all you got to do is unplug the power, unplug the SATA cable, and then remove your drive. A lot of computers have these cool little um, rails, this rail system where you can put it in. If you wanted to add another hard drive, it would be nice to have the additional rail, but you could just slide it in there and secure it somehow, get an additional cable, hook it up, and off you go. So for mine, all I have to do is pull this little 
tray out and it's just loose plastic. Um, sometimes they can be screwed in on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and take my next hard drive. Try to get it in there the same way. See there's little pins that actually just kind of snap in the holes. Stay back in. There's our SATA or SATA cable and our power. Now all we have to do is turn on the computer, reload the operating system.